We now return to our regularly scheduled programming. I don't know what came over me, I just felt like doing a satire video. Hopefully I didn't embarrass myself too much. I probably did. So here we are. Let's say we're going to do a vector reflection problem. Oh, quick note before I get into the problem. This video requires some prerequisites, so you should have already watched through to the advanced matrices and advanced vectors playlists because we need to know about some vector projections and about some coordinate spaces to do this video. So I'll have a link to those in the description. Hopefully I won't forget. Um, and if you haven't if you haven't looked at those videos and there's something you don't understand in this video, then you can go to those videos and catch up. So in any case, here's the problem. We want we have some, an object coming into a wall here. This is the red object, and it's going to strike the wall, and then it's going to bounce off at an angle such that the incoming angle that I've labeled theta here, we want it to be the exact same as the outgoing angle. So it's going to be a perfect reflection. And like the, the way it's drawn right now, it looks like a laser hitting a mirror. That's an example where you would want to make a perfect reflection. So you have a puzzle game where you have uh, lasers hitting mirrors all the time, a uh, puzzle game about lasers, then, then you might want to do something like this. Or this happens a lot in physics simulation. If you have an object striking a wall uh, with a perfectly elastic collision, so for example, a very bouncy ball hitting a, hitting a wall, then uh, you would get a collision like this. You have to do this kind of a calculation. So, so this comes up a lot in video games, so we're going to study it today. How to reflect this vector against the normal of the wall. And I'm going to just give us the variables we have to work with. This is V, which is the vector that we are going to reflect. And this is N. doesn't even have to be unit length, which is going to be the normal unit uh, the normal vector of the wall so let's do a very simple case here let's assume that the x dimension and the normal of the wall line up perfectly so the wall is in the yz dimension going into and out of the plane of of, of your monitor um, and this the x dimension is going directly here to the right then we can simplify this a great deal. If this is VR, this is the vector that we're looking for, then we can say VR is, then we just take the negative of the X component of V and then leave the Y and Z components the way they are. And I mean, you can see that this is going to give you, if you, if you just look at it long enough, you can see that this is going to give you the reflected vector because the vector starts here and it ends there and we're going to keep the up component the same we're going to keep the z component that goes into and out of the monitor the same uh, or y or however you want to consider we're going to keep those two the same but we're going to reflect the x component so instead of coming here it's going to go this way and we're going to get a vector that points up here now remember from our introduction to vectors course that a vector is a position, I'm sorry, it is a magnitude and a direction. It is not a position. So this vector and this vector have the same magnitude, they're both the same length, and they have the same direction, they both point at the same angle, and so they really are the same vector even though they're in a different position. So this is V, R as well. So in the very simple case that the uh, normal is facing exactly in the X or Y or Z direction this is a very easy problem to solve but what if it's not what if you have a plane that's facing at an angle like this any angle really then you have a problem you can't just do this really easy um, swapping of the components like we just did if you can redraw it. That looks good. So we want to still keep these two angles the same. How do we do that? Uh, again, this is the normal vector, and then this is the V vector that we're trying to reflect, and it ends right there. So 
There are two approaches, and I'll first go over the more naive approach that has to do with um, coordinate spaces. Again, you should watch the coordinate spaces video first. And that is to create a matrix M that takes us from this coordinate space where the wall is rotated to a local coordinate space where the wall is not rotated. And when you do that, you'll have a vector M, should not be a subscript, MV, okay? V is the vector in the global coordinate space, and M is the vector in, MV is the vector in the local coordinate space. This entire thing, MV is the vector in the local coordinate space. If all of this talk about coordinate spaces doesn't make sense to you, uh, that's why I'm asking you, now is the time that you should go and watch the advanced matrices playlist. Okay, so then all we have to do is say, well, the negative, the negative x component of that, and then the y component, and then the z component, and we're going to build a vector, same way we did before. Now we have this vector. And we're gonna call that, uh, what can we call it, v star, something like that. Now we're just gonna com do this easy computation in the local space uh, w that where we already know how to do it. And then we have to convert it back to the, the global space. And we do that with this M inverse vector. So we just say, so now we know VR is gonna be M inverse times this V star vector that we already calculated. So this is a great way to do it, except that it's not very satisfying to me because you have to construct this matrix, which we talked a little bit about how to do that in the um, in the advanced matrices video. But um, it's not straightforward. I mean, you can do it, but it's it's not as easy as we would like it to be. And then you have to take the inverse of the matrix, and uh, that we try to avoid if possible. But it turns out we don't really have to do any of this at all. Let's see how we can solve the problem with projections. Projections should have been the very last video that I did in the advanced vectors series. So if you don't know how to do vector projections, take a look at that right now. And vector projections are very powerful. And we're going to see one way in which we can use them right now. So we're going to make an orthogonal projection here of V onto the normal vector. And I've drawn the normal vector here off to the side, but I may as well have drawn it right here, right? Uh, because, again, moving a vector doesn't change what vector it is. So I, I just drew it, I just stuck it right in there. Now we're going to take this orange vector, okay, and we're gonna project it onto the normal vector. And what will we get? In purple, I will draw it very thickly here. We get a vector that looks like this. It starts right here at the base of this triangle, and it continues until it meets with the original V vector. So this right here is, uh, that right there, that purple vector, is VP. I'm gonna call that VP. That's a projected, that's V projected onto N. <coughs> so, don't forget, same as over here, this is what we want. We want this VR reflected vector right here. How can we build that out of the vectors that we have? We have V, it goes from here to here, and we have VP, it goes from here to here. Well, what happens if I take V, okay, and then I subtract two of VP. I'll start here and I'll go to V and then I'll subtract a VP so I'll end up here. And then I'll subtract another VP and I'll end up here and I'll get the vector that I want. So this is, this is the VR that we want, V minus two VP. Now, if you remember from our video about how to do projections, this will be 
the projection onto N of V, okay? Which, now I'm gonna substitute in the formula for um, a vector projection, which is V dot N over N dot N times N. Again, a very powerful formula, which you should commit to memory if you want to be a game developer, a game programmer anyway, um, because it lets you do so many things like this. Uh, quick note, don't forget that if n is unit length, if you know that n is going to be unit length, then you can just, cr n dot n is 1, so you can just cross that out there. We should have covered that um, in a previous video. And so that's it. I'll write it again in a nice, bigger, and a nice, brighter color so it's easier to see. Minus 2 v dot n over n dot n times n. And that will be this vector right here. Now the last step is figuring out what to do with that because you're gonna have an object that has just struck this wall. Um, and if you want to, um, if you want to do this calculation properly, you're gonna have to know what this spot is right here. I'll call it X. Okay, that is the intersection of V with this plane. Now we did that at some point, I, I don't even recall which video it was, I've done so many videos at this point. Um, but you can find pretty easily the, the intersection of a vector with a plane. Once you've done that, you then add this junk right here to get the reflected vector in the new position of whatever it is that you have uh, reflected off the wall. Okay, great. Um, I'm not going to do a code video, a code section of this video yet because I'm having some logistical problems that I don't have time to sort through with the code section. I'll come back and do that later, although it is pretty straightforward, um, this formula, but I still would like to do a code section for you. I think we may or may not do one more video before we go on to the numerical analysis videos, which I'm very much looking forward to. So stay tuned for that. Thanks, you guys. See you next time.